Hey guys, it's me, 80s Morphal Board. Today, guys, we're back for the weekend preview, guys. So I want you guys to um understand that I did this a little later than usual because of the fact that um Manchester United played on a Thursday, and I wanted to see how they do in that game to give a full fair judgment for the game against Arsenal. So that's why it's coming out a bit late. I had to do some work, which is the reason why this is coming out very late. So I do apologize for the timing and everything like that. So please be aware of that. And make sure you guys vote in the community poll. And of course, subscribe to the channel. Like this video if you did enjoy. And all the good stuff. All the good stuff. So we have the first game here. is Real Madrid versus Real Betis. This is an interesting one. This is a very, very interesting one, guys. And I personally think this will be a tough one for Real Madrid. I think Real Madrid will struggle in this game. Real Betis have always given close games against Real Madrid in the past. Real Betis have always, uh, you know, up their level against Real Madrid. Real Betis have actually been relatively good. They actually haven't conceded a goal at the Bernabeu since I believe 2018. Yep, 2018 um, was the last time they actually. Um, sorry, yeah, 2018, I think. Yep, 2018. So. Yeah, that's the last time they conceded a goal at the Bernabeu, you know. And that's pretty impressive. That's really, really impressive. And they've been really good ever since then, you know. Actually, 2017, you know. And that's a very good record to have, you know. And it's always been close. Real Madrid, Real Betis, they always seem to up their level against Real Madrid. It's always been difficult for Real Madrid to edge past against Betis. For this game, I'm going to say Real Madrid, as painful as it is, I would love for Real Madrid to draw points. I think they'll win this game. Simply because it's their first home game of the season. And I feel like they're in really, really good form. And they're just in great form right now at the moment. And the Karim, the dream, man. Benzema, he's going to score likely on the day. And look what they did against Espanyol, man. They, made, they left it late and they won it still. So, you know, I, I think they'll win this game. I'm going to say they win this game. One goal to nil with the goal courtesy of Karim, the dream, Benzema. But look out for Albert Tis, man. Look out for Borja Iglesias, man. And now we'll flick here. Crucial players in the. In fact, you know it's actually really interesting. Fun fact for you guys: Borja Glesias has already outscored Benzema this season. So Benzema is going to be like, uh, I'm going to show up, man. I'm going to show up. <laughs> All right. Next one we have is Eintracht Frankfurt versus RB Leipzig. Now this is an interesting one. I think this is a very close game. I think this one can go either way. And for me, this is a difficult one to call because Leipzig haven't really been great this season. You know, they really haven't been. You know. And they've had a really terrible start to the season, you know, um, you know, with picking up uh, just a win over Wolfsburg, losing to Union Berlin, drawing at home to Kahn and drawing to Stuttgart. And that's kind of the same case for Fr Frankfurt, too. Like, they're both in a similar position. And I actually find the head-to-head -head record to be very interesting here with seven draws and three wins both teams. So, yeah, the last time a winner actually came from this match was Eintracht Frankfurt 2020. And that was in the DFB Pokal, so in the league as well. So Leipzig actually won last 2019. They haven't even won in this decade. That is quite insane to say. Once again, guys, I think this is going to be another draw. Um, I say a 1-1 draw on this one. I feel like Frankfurt Leipzig, they're both in the kind of like the similar level. Um, and um, yeah, I think this is going to be a draw for this one. Um, look out for Nkunku. Nkunku to score. And I guess for Frankfurt, I'm going to go with Bore to score for this one but um, yeah we'll see man we'll see about it because this one's a this one's a tough one to call man very tough one. Oh boy i want to save this one for last next we have is lazio napoli lazio napoli man oh this is a huge game huge game man lazio man i really like the look of this lazio team guys i think this lazio team is really really been impressing me a lot and even though i didn't have them getting european football this coming season I actually might change. I might have to change my mind because they have been absolutely brilliant, especially at home. You know, whereas Napoli, on the other hand, they have also been really good too. Both teams have actually had a great start to the season. You know, both teams um, are in the same points right now, so this will be interesting. Um, last times, um, Napoli's obviously got the head-to-head -head record with 18 wins, but Lazio, man, they got, they've done their job. You know, one thousand and twenty six wins and four draws. So. It's a difficult one to call, guys. It's a difficult one to call for this one. But I am actually going with the underdog to win this one. I think Lazio is going to win this game simply because of the Stadio Olimpico. I feel like that's going to be huge for them, their momentum. And I think they'll edge this game 2-1. I think Churi Mobley will score and Malinkovic Savage will score. And I believe for Napoli, it's going to be Kravetsky. Kravetsala. Oh, however you pronounce his name. 
Um, I think the reason why I gave Lazio the edge is because I feel like Lazio is really good at home. They're very, very solid at home. And um, I think Napoli is going to struggle. I could see a draw. A draw was actually my original prediction, but I wanted to spice things up and change things up and go for a win for Lazio. And then finally, guys, the penultimate game. The penultimate game. You guys knew I had to do this game. There is one other game that I know we haven't got to, but I want to save that one for last. There's a reason why I saved that one for last, and that is this one. Manchester United versus Arsenal. This is a big one, guys. Huge one for Man United. Because Manchester United have actually had a decent start to the season. You know, they actually turned things around with that win over Liverpool. And Manchester United picked up back-to-back away wins against Leicester City and Southampton, respectively. And United have been defensively solid. United have been absolutely defensively solid. They haven't conceded in the last two games. And I feel like Lissandra Martinez and Rafael Varane is the partnership they need at the back. And Malasia has been a great signing for them. I think they've gone that defense suit was really well. And obviously, Casemiro will also play this game too, I would imagine, as well. My big issue for United, though, is that their goal scoring has been a bit dry. Their goal scoring has been a bit dry. And that is kind of like my biggest concern with this team is that Will they be able to get their goal scoring up? You know, because I think Sanchez is going to be critical in this game. Sanchez is going to be critical indeed. And um, he's a crucial, crucial player. You know, and obviously our boy, not our boy, whatever, Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't know if you know he's going to play this game or not. Whereas Arsenal, on the other hand, are coming into this game in excellent form. You know, having won all five of the games, you know, the season 15 points. But I want to be clear with Arsenal fans. I don't want, I don't mean to disrespect Arsenal or anything like that, but. Arsenal haven't really had a tough game yet. You know, let's be real. Crystal, uh, Crystal Palace is tricky at the road, but they still managed to beat the one. Then they, Leicester City, we know they've been disappointed this season. Bournemouth, we know they're Bournemouth. Fulham, although they've been really good, they should still beat Fulham. And Aston Villa, they've been a hot mess right now. So really, honestly, only two games of five is tricky. You know, and let's be real. You know, this will be Arsenal's first true test as well. You know. And I want to see how Gabriel Jesus does in this game. Is he really the deal? Because he can score against like the likes of Bournemouth and Leicester City and Fulham and Aston Villa, respectively. But this is a huge one for Gabriel Jesus. And guys, I think this will be a tough one to call. I'm actually going to sit on the fence for this one, guys. I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw on this one. I could see United winning this game because Arsenal are not really good at Old Trafford and you know, CR7 could make the difference. But um, I say a draw because I feel like um, it'll be a conservative game. I feel like Arsenal will be very defensively. Um, I feel like Arsenal have been defensively sound as well. You know, I think Saliba has been an excellent signing for them as well. Excellent player for them. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. It's a tricky one indeed. It's a tricky one. I want to see how United will do from a losing position in this game. If Arsenal score first, how will United respond? Because we know Arsenal have the capabilities of winning from coming from behind. You know, we know they have that in their locker. So I want to see how United can do the same thing here. So I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw on this one, guys. I think there will be a lot of goals this one. I think um, I think Sandro's going to score. I'm going to go with... Um, I feel like Ericsson will score as well. And for you know, Arsenal, I feel like Gabriel Jesus will suck. I can see both of them scoring on the day. And now, guys, it's the big one. The big one. The big one. The big one, man. And, guys, I'll, I'll see if I can go watch a match reaction or watch along or something. Because, dude, trust me, man. This is a massive, massive game. And I can't believe it's already the early in the season. Huge, huge game, guys. I cannot believe it is this early. It is the Milan Derby. It is the Milan Derby, guys. And, wow. Incredible, man. Absolutely incredible. Huge, huge game, guys. Huge game. Coming into this game, guys, AC Milan, they've just got Sergio Des. Sergio Des will now be a Milan player. We'll see if he plays this game or not. Remains to be seen. And Inter Milan, Lautaro Martinez, Jacko, Lukaku. Oh, my goodness. This Inter team is looking good. It's good. It's looking good, man. It's a tough one to call, guys. It's a very difficult one to call. Um, I'm keen to see how this one pans out. And, guys, I'm going to go for a draw on this one, guys. I know it's a boring prediction, but guys, I feel like the squads are almost the same on this one. Although I do think Inter had the better squad compared to Milan, in my personal opinion. Um, I still think Milan have been really impressive. And obviously, Inter, I'm sure they want revenge for last season when Giroud came in and destroyed them. So, yeah, I think I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw on this one. I think Milan will score first. 
Um, I'm going to say Robert Liao scores, and I think Lautaro Martinez equalizes. But, man, what a game this promises to be with them games. So, we'll see, man. I'll try to see if I could do a match reaction or match watch along or something. I don't know. It depends on my schedule and depends how much work I have laid out. Um, I don't think I could do a watch along just because the game is too close to the Barca game, and I definitely need to watch the Barca game. But I could maybe do a match reaction. We could do a match reaction and for both the Milan game and for the Barca Sevilla game. Because my goodness me, man, I'm gonna definitely need to see this game. Okay. So if you guys did enjoy this video, guys, comment down below your predictions, comments below. Remember, guys, to subscribe to the channel if you're new and I like this video, if you did enjoy. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.